Hello. Today I'd like to talk about Modest Mussorgsky's Pictures at an Exhibition, a work that is one of the most popular pieces in classical music. Mussorgsky was a member of a mighty handful, a group of young composers with the sole purpose of creating a distinctly Russian music. In August 1873, Mussorgsky's friend, the artist Victor Hartmann, suddenly passed away. This news rocked the arts world. Early the following year, in 1874, Mussorgsky attended the memorial exhibition of Hartmann, which comprised of approximately 400 works. And this event deeply moved and inspired Mussorgsky. On returning home, in a frenzy, he composed this piece, which became eventually Pictures at an Exhibition. This work is organized in a highly original manner. Mussorgsky took 10 pictures from the exhibition and created musical depictions of them. Interspersed amidst these pictures are movements called promenades. And the promenades represent Mussorgsky himself walking from one picture to another. The melody generally goes like this. Notice how the meter switches back and forth between five and six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. The reason is because when one is walking through a gallery or an exhibition, you don't walk in measured time. You're a little more casual and relaxed. And so he expresses this through meters that are a little more flexible and changeable. Now, each time the promenade movement recurs, they are slightly different in mood and in tonality. This is because Mussorgsky is experiencing different things depending on what painting he just saw and which painting he's about to approach. Now, I actually know many musicians who don't like this original solo piano version of Pictures and Exhibition. Some consider it cartoonish, shallow, flashy and bombastic, but not particularly pianistic. Now, it might be rather easy to understand. If you look at the titles of these movements, you have Ballet of the Chicks or uh, the gnome, which depicts uh, a sad, pathetic, and rather scary nutcracker jumping from one place to another. Or Baba Yaga, a Russian witch flying in the air. It doesn't really seem like a late Beethoven sonata. You know, it's not very deep. This piece is certainly one of the most arranged works of classical music. That famously, there is Maurice Ravel's orchestra version, which is uh, probably more famous than the original solo piano version by Mussorgsky. But there's also the electronic version by the Japanese artist Tomita. <laughs> version of Emerson, Lake, and Palmer. But I believe that Mussorgsky's solo piano version is the greatest version. It is certainly the most psychological, the most complex, and even mystical. One thing to remember is that Mussorgsky was not a fun, cartoonish composer. This was the composer of Boris Godunov, one of the darkest, most psychologically driven operas of the repertoire. <laughs> His Pictures 
Busan exhibition is filled with a huge variety of moods and subjects. We have love in Il Vecchio Castello, which depicts a medieval castle with a traveling troubadour strumming melancholically songs of love. We have children running around and frolicking in the gardens of Tuileri. We have the suffering of the Polish peasants in the ox cart. We have the, the kind of the frightening nightmarish vision of Baba Yaga flying in the air in her mortar and pestle. But this work also has a very strong streak of social commentary. Notice how a comical or a very charming or witty movement is almost always immediately followed by darkness and suffering. For example, Tuileri depicts a group of children, probably well off, being taken care of by their nannies and running around in the sunshine of the park. And this movement is immediately followed by the ox cart. depicts an enormous uh, ox cart with huge wheels being pulled by the oxen and you hear the song of despair and suffering by these peasants. How could two such different universes exist in the world and in one piece? In many earlier editions, the ox cart actually opens with piano or sometimes even pianissimo. But recent research have discovered that Mussorgsky actually wrote fortissimo right from the beginning. He does not ease us into the darkness from the sunshine. He throws us into this world. Another comical movement is the Ballet of the Chicks. And this movement also is immediately followed by a piece that depicts suffering and cruelty. Goldenberg and Schmieli depicts two characters actually depicting two separate portraits, one of a wealthy, cruel-looking man and the other of a beggar. So Goldenberg <laughs> by the rather pathetic Schmuli. And so once again, lightness and comedy is juxtaposed with suffering, poverty, and cruelty. This piece takes on a mystical turn in a movement called Con Mortuis in Lingua Mortua, or With the Dead in a Dead Language. The original painting by Hartmann depicts Hartmann himself with a group of people in the Paris catacomb. Uh, the right hand side of the painting shows a wall of skulls and Hartmann is actually only cast as a silhouette as the source of light lies behind the bodies. Mussorgsky takes this very mysterious painting and depicts it with a tremolando in the right hand. And the left hand melody actually plays the melody from Promenade. And so the Promenade melody was But in this movement, the Promenade melody is much, much more mysterious and uh, almost frightening. Well, what is happening here? Why is the promenade melody actually inside the painting? Well, the answer may lie in something Mussorgsky wrote on the margins of the manuscript. He wrote, the creative spirit of the dead Hartman leads me towards the skulls, invokes them. The skulls begin to glow softly. I believe that at this point in this piece, 
the separation between Mussorgsky and Hartmann's works, or Mussorgsky and Hartmann, cease to exist, and that Mussorgsky himself enters into the world of Hartmann within the paintings. I believe that at this point, the separation between the art and its viewer disappears. The promenade, which represents Mussorgsky, the viewer, now enters within the world of Hartmann. The promenade melody reappears in the very final piece of this work, the Great Gate of Kiev. Amidst the pealing of the bells of the Russian Orthodox Church, we hear the melody of the promenade. Mussorgsky marks here senza espressione, without expression, which is uh, kind of hauntingly beautiful. And so ultimately, Pictures on an Exhibition is not merely a virtuosic tour de force of a composer trying to show how he can imitate the strumming of a guitar or a witch screeching in the sky. This is a spiritual, almost mystical work. It's a piece that unites Mussorgsky with his friend and artistic brother, Victor Hartmann. It unites music with the visual arts. It unites the living and the dead, all of it through art. And I think in the greatest performances of this work, we can sense that fusion of Mussorgsky and Hartmann and the pianist and the music and the audience becoming one.
Thank you.